Welcome back. Here is our illusion. In the last video, we learned the basic principles and usage of WebGPU. Today, we'll walk you through the code and learn how to use some main APIs. Okay, let's see how to initialize WebGPU. Firstly, we can define an async function. In this function, we can first judge whether the field of navigator GPU exists. If it does not exist, then we can throw a new arrow. I'm not going to write the content to save time. Then if the GPU exists, we can request an adapter object through the request adapter API in navigator GPU. In the last video, we said this API is an asynchronous operation that returns a promise. Then we can use the await keyword in async function to easily handle its return value. And we can directly make this return value equal to a variable. According to the WebGPU specification, this adapter is an abstract proxy of the browser to the WebGPU. And we cannot directly use it to operate a GPU to draw or calculate. We also need to request a specific logic instance through the request device API in the adapter. This API is also a synchronous operation, so we can also easily make it equal to a device through a wait keyword. This device is a specific object that exactly what we need, which can be controlled by JavaScript to operate the GPU. In order to avoid the situation that the device is known, we'd better add a judgment to see whether the adapter exists. If it does not exist, we can also throw a new arrow. We'll look at the specific differences and the usage methods of each API in a while. Now let's go ahead and configure the canvas first. So in this demo, we have added a canvas element and used the CSS to make it fill the full screen. We can easily get this canvas object through the document query selector in the code. But this canvas is actually just an HTML DOM node. We can't use it for drawing directly. So we also need to get a logical canvas that can be manipulated by JavaScript through get context API in Canvas. People who are familiar with web would know that this place we can put a 2D to create a two dimension canvas, or use WebGL2 to create a logical canvas that can be controlled by WebGL or WebGL2. And of course, now with the WebGPU, we can create a WebGPU based canvas. Okay, let it equal to a context variable, and then we can use the configure API in the context to config canvas. We can see what parameters of this API needs with the definition of TypeScript. Take a look inside, we find that it needs at least two parameters, device and the format. Then we come back. It is an object that contains at least one element called device. That is the device that we applied for above. What is about the format? We can take a look into the auto completion. WebGPU supports a lot of this color format, which can be selected. So for beginners, we don't need to know what these values mean or remember their names. We may get a browser default color option through the Get Preferred Format API in the context. Here, we need to pass in the adapter to return a format. Then we can just copy the format directly. The format arrow here reported mainly because the format may be undefined. Because the context may be known or undefined, so we better judge the context again. If it is known, we can also throw a new arrow. Similarly, we'd better judge this canvas because canvas may also be known, which will cause some errors in the following code. 
Then after writing this, we can remove all these question marks and we don't need to make additional judgments here. Then we can print it and see what default format of the browser is and we can call this directly from the outside. Okay, we can see that the default format of the browser is called BGRA8UNORM. This is the RGBA color scheme in range of 0 to 155 that we commonly use. Except that the values are represented as decimals from 0 to 1. For majority cases, we can use this format directly. And most uh, browsers support this format. In addition, we also see there is a size parameter. We generally do not use the default size of the canvas, but set it according to the actual size of the canvas. We can set the size of the canvas to the client width and the client height here. As for the high resolution screen, we may also multiply the value of the device pixel ratio of a window to make the display that is more in line with the resolution. Okay, let's save it and take a look. All right, we can see that there is an additional warning in the console. This is mainly because the Chrome 102 version made a prompt to tell us that the, the change of a parameter in an old version. The composing offer mode parameter has changed from pre-multiplied to opaque. For starters, we don't really need to know the actual meaning of this parameters too much. We can just set it as a default value and to cancel the warning. Okay, there is no warning. All right, this is the whole initialization process. Let's go back and take a look at the usage of adapter and device. Let's talk about the relationship between them. The relationship between adapter and device is very similar to the relationship between the canvas and the context. Canvas is a specific DOM node, but we can't use it to draw graphics directly. We need to create a WebGPU based logical object through get context and use it to control drawing. So similarly, adapter is equivalent to the abstraction of a specific implementation of WebGPU by browser. It is just a proxy. We can use it to read what functions and parameters that the current browser implements for WebGPU, but it cannot be used directly to compute or draw graphs. Now let's print it out to see what kind of specific parameters of the adapter and device. Here you can see this in the console. In addition to a request API, the adapter mailing contains two readable objects. One is features and the other one is limits. The limits mainly tell us the maximum value of some parameters that the current browser supports for WebGPU. For commonly used uh, an example, the maximum textual resolution is uh, 8192, which is 8000 resolution. Various operating systems may have different values. As for the other values, we'll introduce them to you later. Another main attribute features it is used to indicate which extensions are implemented by the current browser. Three means that it has three extended functions. Different browsers, graphics cards of different operating systems, we may have different implementations. It is impossible for WebGPU to uniform process all functions. So while the developer requests a device, can add some optional load and to set some parameters. Then we can go through the features in this adapter to see what kind of features are in the current browser version. We can use for each function to print it out and let's have a look. In a Chrome version 102, the functions of these three extensions are supported on the Mac. For beginners, we don't need to understand what these three functions do. If we use them later, we'll explain them in details. 
we mainly need to know some basic usage of adapter. Now let's take a look at the device again. Its structure is very similar to that of uh, adapter. In addition to its own many uh, additional APIs, it also includes features and limits. Let's look into the features first. Its feature has zero, which means that it doesn't load any extensions. If we look into the limits carefully, we can find that some of them are also different from adapters. For example, the size of the storage buffer. Here it is uh, 128 megabytes. The value in the adapter is very large. You will find it is 2 gigabytes. That is to say the browser can actually support 2 gigabytes buffer, but the device only requires a size of 122 megabytes by default. So how to apply for this extended function and modify this uh, parameter? This time we can attach two additional parameters values to a request device. One is required features, which is an array. The other one is required limits, which is an object. In this array, we can add the functions that we want to apply. For example, we add this texture compression BC. By the way, we can also modify the size of the storage buffer and let it equal to the value of the limits in the adapter which is max storage buffer binding size. Okay, the feature size in the current device has changed from zero to one. The maximum value in the limits has become two gigabytes. Through these lines of code, I believe everyone should be able to understand the device and adapter more intuitively. In addition to this, in the request adapter API, we can also add a power performance option. With auto completion, we can see that there are two parameters. One is high performance, the other is low power. As the name suggests, we can use this API to set which power management mode GPU runs in. We may know that the different power schemes will affect the performance of CPU and GPU, especially for mobile devices, laptops. This is very important. For many notebooks with still graphics cards, high performance can work on the discrete graphics card, and the integrated graphic cards is used by default while using low power. So we can use this option to choose which graphics cards to use. But it should be noted here. The WebGPU specification also states that the power preference here is only an expected option. The specific use depends on the actual act operation of the browser, which is related to the version of browser and the operating system, the driver-like system, and it is also related to wider uh, the power is plugged in or not. Even we set high performance here, it is not guaranteed to run in high performance management mode or guaranteed runs in a discrete graphics card. It is more of a preference. So the specific control is still in the browser and the operating system. Okay, then after completing these steps, we can finally return all the variables we need to apply for. For example, we pass out adapter, device, contacts, and format to facilitate external function to use it. Here I need to mention this is a shorthand method in JavaScript. If the variable name is the same as the parameter name, we can omit the part after the colon. For example, we don't need to write device colon here, and we don't need to write colon format either. In the same way, we can also declare this size parameter outside. If it is also called size, then we can also directly code it as size here. This will make the code simpler and more readable. Finally, we can declare a run function externally to call this init web GPU. Of course, this is also an async function and also return a promise. So we can process this return value through a wait, and it can be easily taken out.
For example, we may use the last letter, so we will take this out firstly for later use. Then we can use this device to configure the GPU pipeline. This is all for today. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.